Okay, guys. Okay, so today we are going to discuss about our new topic, function of kidney. Kidneys are basically those main excretory organs which cause to convert the filtrate which is filtered out from the blood into urine. On daily basis, there are uh, there is around 180 liter of filtrate which is filtered out, which we are going to discuss. And out of that, the daily urine which is formed is around 2.5 liters. So it's like it's pretty. Uh, uh, exceptional that uh, a lot of amount of important organic compounds important uh, a lot of important uh, electrolytes water amino acid glucose are uh, compounds such as electrolytes glucose amino acids are absorbed on the other side if we talk about uh, apart from removal of waste product it has got a role in uh, in the synthesis of several hormones such as erythropoietin which is initial for, important for initiating the synthesis of RBC production and on the other side it also maintains blood pressure by releasing a hormone which is known as renin. Renin basically causes to con um, release sodium ions into water uh, sorry sodium ions into the blood due to which it causes to maintain the blood pressure accordingly. Moreover it is important for synthesizing a vitamin vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is synthesized by kidney which uh, has a function to deposit calcium and potassium, uh, calcium and phosphate ions within the bones due to which it makes the bones stronger. On the other side, if you talk about balance minerals and chemicals, it basically uh, works in osmoregulation by balancing minerals and chemicals. For example, if we talk about winter season, in winter season, the urine which is excreted out is quite dilute because there's less loss of water. Whereas in the summer season, the urine is concentrated as a result of a lot of loss of water which occurs due to the hot weather in the form of sweating. On the other side, removal of excess fluid also occurs such that any sort of excess fluid is uh, um, removed from the body with the help of kidneys. On the other side, if we talk about some other functions, these are also important for maintaining the blood pH. They are also important for maintaining the pH of the blood because they because uh, these kidney, uh, the kidneys uh, cause to release bicarbonate ions, release proton ions or bicarbonate ions into the blood due to which it causes to maintain the pH of the blood as well as the pH of the urine which is excreted out. So that's all. That's the entire process which occurs in the tubular secretion. In tubular secretion, the pH of the blood is maintained, which uh, as well as pH of the urine is maintained by releasing of proton ions through selective select by tubular secretion. The release of the proton ions through tubular secretion. We are going to study that as well. So this is all about the function of the kidney. One more thing that I wanted to highlight is that uh, there is an entire composition of urine which we are going to discuss. On the other side, if we talk about ultrafiltration, as we have previously understood the point that glomerulus is covered with podocytes. Cells. As you may see in the diagram, the podocytes are having pseudopodia around them just like ameba they are having pseudopodia which causes uh, to filter only that uh, those particles which are greater than which are smaller than 70 nanometer in diameter which are smaller than 70 nanometer in diameter are filtered out rest which are larger than 70 nanometer diameter for example plasma protein which are positively charged as well as uh, the blood cells are remain behind while um, in that sense it causes to secrete all of the smaller particles such as glucose, amino acids, electrolytes, water, um, nitrogenous waste such as nitrogenous waste such as urea, uric acid, ammonia, creatinine all of this is excreted all of this is filtered out on daily basis 180 liter of blood 180 liter of filtrate is formed in the glomerulus in every 24 hours and um, by selective reabsorption process there is only 2.5 liter of urine formed 2.5 liter of urine is formed on daily basis on average in average grammatical in uh, uh, normal grammatical conditions so what actually happens is that as we have previously discussed what actually happens is that the effluent arterial is having thick is um, basically having um, a greater diameter and the efferent arterial is having a smaller diameter. It, efferent arterial is thicker. Sorry, efferent arterial is thicker. Efferent arterial is thinner. Efferent arterial is thicker. Efferent arterial is thinner due to which 
efferent arterial has less uh, has smaller diameter and efferent arterial has larger diameter efferent arterial due to smaller diameter exerts high pressure and efferent arterial due to larger diameter exerts low pressure due to which the blood tends to flow from high pressure to low pressure as a result of which an hydrostatic pressure is generated in the glomerulus which causes to drive the process of ultrafiltration also known as glomerular filtration in that sense the hydrostatic pressure generated is directly proportional to the glomerular filtration rate or gfr and um, the glomerular filtration rate depends on the hydrostatic pressure as well as it depends on the size of the uh, pores it depends on the hydrostatic pressure as well as it depends on the size of the pore as well as the size of the particles which are going to be filtered out so it depends on the size of the pores it depends on the hydrostatic pressure it depends on the charge of the pores as well so uh, ultrafiltration is all dependent on hydrostatic pressure and size of the pores uh, which allows the ultrafiltration possible in the Bowman's capsule. And one more thing, I just wanted to clarify this thing over here that the efferent arterial is thicker, efferent arterial is thinner, efferent arterial is having smaller diameter, efferent arterial is having larger diameter due to which efferent arterial is having high pressure and efferent arterial having thinner pressure, having lower pressure. So due to this high pressure to low pressure flow occurs and that generates hydrostatic pressure which is uh, driving the glomerular filtration. Right, this is a basic, uh, you know, intro about ultrafiltration. From tomorrow, we are going to discuss the next step of urine formation.